With Halloween being around the corner, I want to talk about one of my favorite genres in video games. Zombies. Whether you're shooting your way through a large horde of zombies, or walking through a tight corridor without being grappled, or simply just smashing everything that you see, I think there's one game that stands out among them all that combines a unique gameplay and setting, and it's... Dead Rising was first released in 2006 for the Xbox 360 by Capcom, and at the time it's considered to be an impressive display of technology for the 7th generation consoles. The game had large detailed open areas filled with hordes of zombies and many interactable objects in the game world. It also used the first iteration of the MT Framework engine, which has gone on to be used on other popular Capcom franchises as well, like Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, and Mega Man. The Dead Rising franchise later received three more game entries by Capcom Vancouver, three movies and two remake titles. But after all these years, many fans of the series still regard the first game in the series to be the best, and that's for good reason. While some may consider Dead Rising to be a mindless zombie killing game without much substance in the story, I disagree because the game dives into many uncharted territories in the game genre. Since the first game is made by an entirely Japanese development team, the game takes a comedic and serious look into American cultures and stereotypes from a foreign perspective. While the game is filled with hilarious and absurd moments that are way over the top, this is my star! I believe Dead Rising is made with passion and attention to details that draw many meaningful connections and reflections with our real world by looking into serious concepts and ideas but through a light-hearted and somewhat satirical tone. But first, let's look into the setting and the basic gameplay mechanics of Dead Rising. Right off the bat, you'll play as a freelance photojournalist, Frank West. You're tasked with photographing the chaos unfolding across a small fictional town named Willamette set in Colorado. You have three days at the Willamette Mall to hunt for a scoop of a lifetime to uncover the truth behind the zombie outbreak. Meanwhile, you have to rescue survivors that are stranded in a mall along with the possibility of meeting some not so friendly people. Since the place has been overrun by zombies, you'll have to scavenge for whatever inside the mall for weapons and help. Along with this, you are also equipped with a camera that allows the player to take photographs of zombies or the other characters that you encounter along in the game. The photographs you take in the game will help you earn experience points that can level up Frank's character to increase health, inventory space, or even learn some new skill moves. The game also features a real-time system in which missions will expire if you ignore them for too long. It gives the player a sense of urgency in obtaining all the available scoops to uncover and learn about the truth behind the outbreak. While many have pointed out how Dead Rising is a straight reference to George Romero's film Dawn of the Dead And like the movie, both have made similar criticisms to consumerism and how it closely resembles Black Friday sales in America or even so in recent months What in the world? But in this video, I wanted to take a look at an overlooked aspect of Dead Rising. Specifically, how the game utilizes the camera feature and Frank West's character as a photojournalist to touch upon on the idea of media sensationalism through Mean World Syndrome. But also, how the game desensitized players and changed their gameplay behavior subconsciously throughout the game.
So what exactly is this mean world syndrome thing? It is hypothesized by the late media scholar George Gerbener, which he stated in his academic journal, The Mainstreaming of America Violence, that it's a cognitive bias which people perceive the world as more dangerous than it is due to the long-term exposure of violence-related content on mass media. In a documentary about the Mean World Syndrome, Professor Michael Mordigan also further elaborates on his idea. Heavy exposure seems to have the capacity to numb and brutalize. It also seems to whet the appetite in some of us for ever-increasing levels of violence in programming. Presenting a steep challenge for broadcasters who need to keep finding ways to stimulate us and to get us to keep watching. The public which is punch drunk and violent, which has been cultivated to accept violence as normal, to accept violence uh, as uh, something that is done very frequently in the real world. The way to satisfy this market is to increase the dosage, so to speak. It's like a drug where after having become accustomed to a certain dose, you have to increase the dosage to get the same effect. I think the game also closely links itself with what Germner said and it also satirizes the state of mass media in America. And this particular idea is revealed through the camera mechanic and the kill counter in the game. In most games, the camera feature is treated as a bonus and neutral element to record moments or events that happen in the game. But in Dead Rising, the camera contributes to the gameplay, but also tells us a lot about what photographs are prioritized in mass media. In a particular mission, Frank West is tasked with photographing another photographer posing for zombie kills. The game also prompts up a guide in explaining how experience points are determined through the photographs, which the photos are rated according to the level of violence, drama, horror, or even erotica depicted. I think this places the player in a very interesting position. Especially with your goal as a photojournalist to photograph genres surrounding these themes during the outbreak. I think this idea hits home especially in a prologue sequence which is pretty clever and effective. In the game, you are guided to photograph and focus on specific events. For example, like the woman who is surrounded by the zombie on the roof. Rather than saving the woman, we only spend a majority of the time observing her encounter until she meets her eventual demise. But then it almost feels wrong for the rating for the, our photographs of, of the recently deceased woman. Because the game just pops out these phrases. Whereas when you take a photo of the school bus surrounded by zombies, the implicitness of the photo isn't rewarded and the rating seems to be neutral colored and not as flashy compared to capturing more ex explicit events. Here, we can see that Dead Rising's camera feature takes on a proactive role compared to others. The game is less concerned with framing or the composition of your photographs and are, is more biased towards the ones that depict sensational themes. And like our mass media, this sensationalism is often geared towards provoking emotional responses so that we become more attached in watching such programs. The game doesn't just symbolize how zombies are like us and always wanting more in terms of consumerism, but also how we constantly crave for sensational topics or content in mass media. I mean, just take a look at the game's pause menu, the side-scrolling tutorial bars, and the big bold headlines that cover throughout the screen. It's all filled with visual cues just like typical news broadcasts. With a game filled with so much subtle details, I don't think this aspect would simply be ignored by the developers. I think that the game makes an interesting commentary on news media which makes the player at times feel questionable and there's, it gives also a sense of guilt when taking such photographs. That's also why I think that despite the goofy sense of humor at times, this game still feels quite grounded in some way and feel plausible in real life, even though morality isn't really a significant factor in Dead Rising. While your role as a photojournalist in the game can help bring light to events that would not be known otherwise, 
It poses an interesting dilemma for the players on whether the media are just simply exploiting from the suffering of others for views. Another minor element I want to talk about in the game is how it contributes to the idea of desensitized violence through the inclusion of a kill counter. If this was just another regular zombie game, then the kill count would just probably be hidden in a statistic page or a scoreboard. But in Dead Rising, the players are always conscious of the numbers of kills they make throughout the game on the bottom right corner. The amount of kills the player make is also updated in real time and even rewards you with bonus experience for every 50 zombie of kill you make. You could say that it's strange that because Frank West isn't quite a military personnel or a person who's like sent there to eliminate the zombies, which makes the inclusion of this kill counter feels a bit off. Because it shouldn't matter for his character, as his goal is to get the scoop on the outbreak. But killing zombies is more of an optional thing, and there isn't a really a set amount of zombies you have to kill to beat the game. In fact, you can actually beat the game without killing a single zombie. But subconsciously, as players, we kind of get more involved in the process of killing, and even enjoy experimenting with the different items available in the mall. And we try to use those to kill zombies that get in our way throughout the game. Combined with the new skill moves and health upgrades the game provides you upon leveling up, we become more incentivized to find more zombies to kill for even more experience points, hence more upgrades. This kind of links to how Gerber sees violence and mass media. The way to satisfy this market is to increase the dosage, so to speak. It's like a drug. The higher the body count, the more stimulated we get. But it also kind of mirrors on how we view mass media as well. The more violent it gets, the more attention it gets. When I first fell in love with this game, it was because of its innovative setting and I was blown away by the absurd amount of things you can do in this game. But in retrospect, I think my appreciation for this game has only grown even more, especially when I understood how it reflect and remake a reality today. Yeah, the graphics indeed look a bit dated in 2020. You're gonna get yourself beaten alive by zombies? What? Did you just say zombies? And the AI is nowhere near good. Thank you. But the fact that we're still talking about this game after 14 years and today's situation is eerily similar to the premise of the game is a testament to how well this game has aged. At the same time, it's also kind of scary how this 14 year old game has been more relevant than ever. In this video, I've only touched on very briefly on some aspects of Dead Rising and there is so much more else to say about this game, but maybe that's another video for another time. Since we're spending most of the time staying at home and this pandemic probably isn't going away anytime soon, why not go ahead and give Dead Rising a playthrough? You won't be disappointed.